catus. And if you were handwriting it, then you would underline that as well. Ooh, like that. Felis catus. Homo sapi. Struthio camelus. And the really cool thing about this is where I can link this to evolution. All right. Linnaeus was in the 1800s and he didn't have the technology to know the difference between animals. Well, he, he could understand animals and plants, but bless him, when he saw algae for the first time, he didn't have a clue. Because parts of them were animals, parts of them were plants. He didn't have a clue where to put them. Because he didn't have the technology, he didn't have the microscopes that we do nowadays. So he knew nothing about the biochemical nature of those organisms. So, Colonnais could only do part of it. But nowadays, we can look at the full biochemical nature. That includes the DNA of organisms. So nowadays, when you look at the genus of species, if they're the same, that means those species share a really common ancestor. So look at it between humans and ostriches. Every species is different, genes is different, family is different, primate is different, even the class is different. But we share the same phylum. But if I were to compare humans and chimpanzees, they'd have the same phylum, they'd have the same class and the same order. Then they would start to differentiate. The more similarities two species have in their classification, more recent their common ancestor is from evolution. So the reason why we know all this is because evolution has been applied to classification. And this is where Cole Vos comes in. He looked at chemical analysis, so DNA analysis, and he found out that those kingdoms that we know of, animals, plants, fungi, prokaryotes, and processes, he found out that actually, not straightforward as that, and there's almost three biochemical domains. One is called RK, which is primitive bacteria, usually extreme files. Bacteria, the so normal bacteria, normal prokaryotes, and eukaryotes. And just have a little look at where the kingdoms fit into this. So the bacteria, the RK kingdom, only has one kingdom. The bacterial kingdom only has one kingdom. But eukaryotes, there are four kingdoms. Plants, animals, fungi and proteins. That does get a little bit confusing for some. It does. But it's just that appreciation that domains, a domain is above a kingdom. And most of the kingdoms are, of course, eukaryotes with a nucleus and such. But it's almost a prokaryote kingdom that's been split by the domains. Because when they looked at it in biochemical analysis, evolutionary speaking, these two are as different as a bacteria is to a plant. That's the end. Thank you very much for watching if you got all the way through. So what I've got now, I'll show you where further resources are, because some of you will have probably been asked to complete some practice questions. If you go on Filestore, follow, you know, go to Filestore. So click Resources tab on the Kevin's website, click Student, Lesson Resources, Science Biology, GCSE, this is Paper 2, and then you'll have the folder for Adaptation and Classification. The topic-based questions with mark schemes are in there, as are the revision booklet. If you're going through Edmodo, go onto the Biology Prep Edmodo group. Go into Folders, Paper 2, and Adaptation Classification, where you'll find this video, the revision booklet I've made, which I promise you is far better than any revision guide you'll ever get, and also the practice questions with their marks. Thank you very, very much for watching. Peace out, boys and girls.